Good evening, Shoreline families. Happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining me. Tonight, I am going to read a couple of chapters out of the book, Blotch. We use this book on Wednesday nights. Uh, this book is meant to open up conversations about God's give, about God's goodness, about our sinfulness, and the blessing and the grace of Jesus Christ. So I am going to read uh, chapters one and chapter two. So you can follow along, but first let me read this verse. It's out of Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they will be like wool. Our hope in reading this book, Blotch, will help young readers grasp the message that their sins can and will be forgiven, and they can find salvation in the one true king. Chapter 1. The journey begins. Blotch was the smallest brother in the smallest family in the smallest village in the whole kingdom. As the bright orange sun began to set, little Blotch sat in the same place where he ended every day. He was perched on the edge of a very small cliff on the edge of a very small pond looking into the clear and perfectly still water. The surface of the water was like a mirror and Blotch would often stare at his, at his reflection for hours. It's not, it's not that he liked the way he looked. In fact, it was just the opposite. Blotch spent his evenings trying to race the vanishing light of the sun as he counted all the spots and stains upon his face and body. But every day as light faded, his mother called to him to come to dinner before he could get to the end of his counting. There were just too many stains. Blotch was not born with all his stains. None of his people were. They all began their lives with only one small mark, but the number of stains grew and grew with each passing day. No matter how they tried, they could not keep from getting new stains. The stains were part of who they were. With a name like Blotch, he thought about those stains and spots a lot. Of course, the stains were no mystery. Everyone knew where they came from. If you told a lie, a stain appeared. When you said something mean, there was another spot. Disobeying parents, oops, here comes another. Whenever anyone was bad, mean, or just did something wrong, another stain would appear. Even the best people Blotch knew had their own stains. He didn't know exactly what had caused each of their spots, but he knew it wasn't anything good. Although no one liked the marks, no one knew how to make them go away. But Blotch was a determined boy, and he was determined to find the answer. As the sun faded behind the hills, Blotch made his way home. It was time for dinner, and he knew he would not solve the problem of the stains tonight. Around the table with his father, mother, and two older brothers, Blotch sat quietly while they talked about their day. They shared their stories of bullies at school, mean conversations at work, and rude people at the store. These were the kinds of things stained people talked about. Blotch didn't say a word. That is, until his mother turned to him and said, Well, my little Blotch, why so quiet tonight? Blotch looked up quickly, sending a single tear sliding down his cheek. How do we get rid of the stains? His voice was shaky, but loud. Every voice at the table went silent, and every eye focused on Blotch. I'm tired of the spots, 
the marks and the stains. I want them to go away. He didn't know whether to cry or be mad. His oldest brother spoke first. Oh, be quiet, Blotch. Everyone's got him. As he spoke, a faint little spot appeared just under his left eye. Blotch's middle brother didn't say a word, but he didn't have to when a stain appeared on the end of his brother's nose. Blotch knew he must be thinking mean things about him. Just then, Blotch's father spoke up. Now, now, Blotch, your brother's right. Unfortunately, stains are just a part of life. You need to learn to live with them like everybody else. But Blotch didn't want to live with the stains. Deep down, he believed they were not meant to have spots. And he was going to find some way, any way, to make them go away. A little embarrassed, Blotch pushed away from the table and walked around to sit next to his father. Blotch whispered, Dad, what if, what if there's a way we could get rid of the spots? Well, I suppose that would be wonderful, my little Blotch. But how in the world could that ever be? We have always had spots, said his father. Blotch felt his stomach tighten, tighten. He had thought about his plan almost every night while sitting by the pond and counting stains. But saying it out loud would make it much more real. Blotch swallowed the lump in his throat and continued, Dad, what if someone knows how to get rid of the stains? What if someone in, in one of the other villages knows what to do? What if the king of the kingdom could make them go away? Blotch sat up taller, wiped the tears from his eyes. He looked right at his father, feeling bigger than he had ever felt. He asked one more question. Dad, I need to find an answer. Would you let me go on an adventure to see if someone knows how to get rid of these stains? Blotch's heart pounded like thunder as he waited for his father's reply. It seemed like an hour before he heard the quiet answer, yes. Blotch couldn't believe it. He looked up at his father and saw that this time the tears were in his father's eyes. Even though Blotch was young, his father knew he couldn't deny Blotch the chance to try and find the answers he was searching for. Chapter two, the hiders. Early next morning, Blotch packed a backpack with a few sandwiches and a sleeping bag and a map. He kissed his mother, hugged his father's, hugged his father and his brothers, and bravely set off down the road, looking for his answer. After an hour or so, he heard the sounds of a noisy, bustling village. Getting closer, he saw many people working, walking, and talking to one another. It was much like his village, but something was very different. Blotch didn't see any stains. As he looked around, he admired the rows of white picket fences and lush green lawns. The streets were spotless, and every single person looked neat and polished. Blotch was usually shy, but he couldn't help but stare. See an entire village of people with no stains, no spots, no marks. He could hardly believe his eyes. Could I have already found the answer to my question? He thought to himself. Blotch was so excited that he forgot his manners and he ran up to the first group of strangers he saw. You have no stains, he exclaimed. A smile stretched across the face of a tall stranger carrying a box full of bottles. The man responded in a snooty voice. Why, no, no, I do not. 
No one here in Hyderville has stains. We are simply better than those those stained people. Blotch was so amazed that he didn't really notice the stranger's insult. He reached out to touch the arm of the stain-free man. The stranger's smile quickly disappeared as he jerked his arm away. I would thank you to mind your own business, he said before forcing another smile again. Blotch stepped back and lowered his head. Oh, I, I'm so sorry. He spent the rest of the morning walking around the village, trying not to stare at all the stainless people. Blotch could tell that they were also trying, although not as hard, to keep from staring at Blotch's stains from head to toe. And whenever he walked near a group of villagers, they would step far off the sidewalk to avoid him. Blotch couldn't quite figure it out. These villagers may not have any marks or stains, but they certainly weren't very nice. After a while, Blotch got the courage to ask a few villagers how it was possible that they had no stains. None of your business. That's for me to know and you to find out. Why don't you go back to where you came from? The harder Blotch tried to discover the secrets of Hyderville, the harder the villagers tried to hide the answer. But with every rude response, Blotch just grew more and more determined to find answers. He was so focused on the mission that he didn't hear the rumbles of thunder from the summer storm passing through. In fact, he never would have noticed it if it weren't for the way everyone in Hyderville began running for cover. Run, run, came the cries of mothers to their children, grown men pushing through the crowds of people, not caring who they shoved down on their way to get inside. Somewhere, anywhere. Lot shouted to anyone who would listen. It's just a little rain. Why are you so afraid? Just then a booming clap of thunder announced the presence of a downpour. Everyone had made it inside. That is, everyone except Blotch and the tall stranger he'd met when he first arrived. The man had dropped his box in the commotion and was frantically trying to pick up the bottles. In the rain, this tall stranger looked different. He looked sad. Not sad like he got caught in the rain, but sad that something horrible had happened. As the rain fell on the once spotless man, Blotch could see the stranger now looked like him, stains and all. The rain had washed away his secret. The people of this village were really no different from those in the town Blotch had come from. They had just as many stains. They had only covered them up. And the rain revealed everything the people were hiding. Blotch picked up his backpack, glanced at the sad, stained stranger, and walked away from Hyderville. So we have a couple of discussion questions uh, that you can go through uh, with your children. Uh, or if you have older brothers and sisters, uh, discuss these. So. The first two are from chapter one, uh, and, and the first discussion question is, you and I don't have any spots appearing on our bodies, but in what way do we have the same problems that Blotch does? Well, it's very simple. We are sinful. We were born into sin. We still sin, and, and just because you can't see the spots appear on our bodies doesn't mean that we don't sin. Second question, Blotch is looking for the king to get rid of his stains. Who should we go to if we want our sins forgiven? Talk about that with your kids. Uh, tell them that, that Jesus is the only way to have our sins forgiven. Number three, the hiders of Hyderville only covered up their stains. Why does covering up their stains really not do any good. 
just because you cover something up doesn't mean that it didn't happen. Just because you cover up the stains on your body doesn't mean that that God can't see what's inside of your heart. So it's so much better to admit that we have sinned, to admit that we have stains and seek our Father's forgiveness. Seek the forgiveness of Jesus. Even if we hide our mistakes from others, who will always know and why does that matter? Who always knows? Jesus always knows. And why does that matter? It matters because if we don't ask for forgiveness, we miss out on the blessings that Jesus has for us. Now you can go more in depth uh, with these discussion questions. I encourage you to look up Bible verses uh, to to talk with your children about uh, these questions. And then kiddos, we we have a fun game for you. Uh, And and it goes along with the book. Uh, So sin is a word that means to miss the mark. So go find a trash can, preferably a clean one. Go find maybe some some paper around your house or something else uh, that, that can be a ball. And take turns throwing that crumpled paper or the ball into the trash can. When someone makes a basket, everyone can yell, hit. But when someone misses, sadly say, miss. Explain that the word sin simply means missing the target of what God has for us. That is why everyone has sinned. We all miss the mark. Guys, thank you for for tuning in. Uh, We will continue uh, to go through the book, Blotch. Uh, I hope that you have found this helpful. Uh, This this is the book. I don't don't remember if I showed it to you at the beginning of this video, but Blotch is available on Amazon. Uh, I would go pick up a copy. It is a fantastic way to talk to your kids about sin, forgiveness, and, and the amazing gift of grace that we have received through Jesus Christ. Thank you. Uh, Enjoy your Wednesday night. And thank you so much for letting me uh, and our kids ministry team be a small part of your week. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you. God bless.